Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharatiya and welcome to Let's Talk. Today we have two guests from Macrometa, Justin Johnson, Director of Developer Product and David Cumberworth, SVP of Sales. David, Justin, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, great to be here Swapnil. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and since this is the first time I'm talking to you folks, so tell me a bit about the company itself. What problem are you folks trying to solve for the developer community? So Macrometa is building a uh, platform for developers to build extremely fast applications uh, easily. The way that we do that is we provide cloud services um, that are distributed globally. So we have a geo distributed platform where a developer can um, store data uh, in a, as a database in multi-model and do real-time stuff with that data as well. It's all serverless, so a developer can get going just by signing up. It doesn't have to um, do anything else other than get an API key and get started. We're trying to solve some very interesting challenges, Swapnil, as, as Justin alluded to. You know, we are a we're a geo-distributed database, um, and that 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 helps with a number of uh, use cases, which we'll, we'll certainly dive into. Um, but putting data next to the source of the consumption of that data, be it an IoT device, be it a user, be it a um, you know a, 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 an in-house data consumer, creates a very broad set of use cases that frankly weren't available to developers previously because of computer sciences challenges, right? So if you have data stored in a central cloud and a device or an IoT appliance um, a long way away, you know, backhauling that data across a network is slow, you know. So what Macrometa are doing is putting the data and putting data and state next to those users. So that's really opening a very broad, uh, broad set of use cases for developers um, by having data right next to them and right next to their uh, their appliances. So your next generation data intensive applications become a very, very straightforward uh, thing to develop on top of Macrometa. Let's talk a bit about your relationship with Linode. In what capacity are you folks working with them? Uh, we use Linode for um, uh, our self-service platform. So um, if you go sign up, to, uh, if you go to macrometa.com and sign up for uh, our self-serve platform, we have a we have a free tier. Uh, the servers that Macrometa is running on is is Linode. Um, and we have nine locations on that that platform, so we're we've deployed to nine of uh, those locations. Um, we also use them for uh, uh, internal um, servers for dev environments and testing and, and and things like this. Why did you choose Linode? Because if you look at you know the cloud space, hyperscalers, of course, they are three big, and then of course, Oracle, IBM are there too. And uh, alternative cloud, it's a clouded market. What value did Linode bring to, to not only you, as you said, you are using internally, but also for self-serving customers? Linode's great in price to performance. The um, you know the amount the amount of computing the amount of resources they give you for what they charge is is fantastic, and their service is rock solid. Um, you know they, they've also been great with their support. Uh, friendly people get back to you right away. It's, a, it's just a, been a great relationship with them. You also participated in their uh, startup program, which is called Linode Startup Program. What is this program all about? And, and, and how did you that program help you build your infrastructure, which you use, as you said, both for internally and externally? We obviously you know, started, as, as every other early stage organization, right, on you know, operating in a, in a you know, very financially um, constrained way right and as justin said you know we we wanted to stand up a you know free free developer version of our paths so that you know developers get their hand on the hands on the platform um, and start to play with the uh, the technology you know trying to build that in one of the three cloud titans just would have been cost prohibitive for us even with their credits you know so um, as, as Justin said, you know the the support we get from the node is is fantastic, right? And through the startup program, our ability to use credits and you know not burn our own, you know seed seed investments, but also allow you know really allow 
customers and prospects to and developers to access our uh, our product that sits on top of the Linode was uh, was really the the driver to uh, to use the uh, or join the Linode startup program. And since we are talking about investment and funding, in June uh, you folks raised a uh, twenty million uh, Series A funding. What are the areas that you are looking at investing in and growing in this uh, round of funding? Yeah, we we've got a we've got a very um, binary and straightforward answer to. <laughs> to that one actually swap now in the it's a it's a it's a third 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 pizza slice between sales third into sales third into marketing and third into engineering um you know all, all areas obviously to build the business but um you know it's very cleanly uh, divided between those three areas of the business you serve customers globally uh, you gave example of bank of course for a lot of you know regulatory purposes a lot of things are on prem but then we are also talking about there are local uh, regulations regarding data sovereignty gdpr is a good example so how do you leverage linode globally so that first of all you also want to move data closer to the workload so that it's accessible easily but at the same time sometimes you have to also follow these guidelines so tell me how do you leverage uh, because they have i think data centers around the globe which ones do you leverage and how do you ensure that you help your customers adhere to local laws you know, for us pii and gdpr compliance are checkbox checkbox um you know out of the box components with our with the gdm platform right so you know, it's very, very easy for us to tag data to a region, right? And with hyperlocality, you know, we can da tag data to a, you know, a specific pop, right? So we sit on top of every, you know, of, of every Linode pop um, where we need very, um, you know, very specific PII or GDPR compliances say we will tag data to a region and that data will never, never leave that region. So actually... PII and GDPR, as I said, is PII compliance and regulatory compliance is a is a checkbox item for us. It's very very straightforward to uh, to deliver with the GDN and on top of Linode. Justin, David, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the company and also thanks for explaining how you folks work with Linode. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. So much.